Welcome back to Morning Joe. A new law give, do, gives doctors in New York State uh, legal protections to now serve women in other states where abortion is banned. On Friday, Democratic Governor Kathy Hochul signed a bill that legally protects doctors who prescribe and send abortion pills to patients living in other states where the procedure is outlawed. The new law essentially helps to expand medication abortion access nationwide by allowing more patients to end pregnancies without having to travel out of state. And joining us now, the governor of New York, Kathy Hochul, also with us, the co-founder and CEO of All In Together, Lauren Leader. Good to have you both with us. Governor Hochul, I need to understand how this works because this sounds like it protects the doctors, but what about the patients? Well, we can protect the doctors in New York. When the patients go home, that's a different issue when we're talking about procedures performed in New York. We, we passed a shield law last year, even before the Dobbs decision was released because it had been leaked, as you know, and we stepped up and made sure that our providers would be protected if a woman comes to our state for services. What we realize now that half of all abortions are performed with the medication option. So we want to make sure that we could be allowing our doctors to not be concerned about any liability against them if they want to prescribe to someone out of state. So we're protecting the doctors here in New York, but any patient who comes to New York, she will receive those services in person because we also have laws protecting against extradition or cooperation from our law enforcement with other states. So we want to take a strong, bold move because we're fighting fire with fire now. That's exactly what's going on, and the Republicans stop at nothing, and we have to stand up and fight back. So are they receiving the medication via telehealth, or do they have to come to New York? No, they don't have to come to New York. That's the beauty of how telemedicine has evolved, especially during the pandemic, and for abortion providers to be able to have a conversation via uh, Zoom and have that pa basically a patient conversation and prescribe based on the, the information mm -hmm. they gleaned from the conversation, they can then prescribe it to an individual in another state. And that's what we're protecting. We're protecting women's rights, not just here in New York, but we have a moral responsibility to help women all over this country. And does this new law protect women, for example, a woman in Florida who receives a medication abortion through telehealth from New York? Is she protected in her state for having that termination? She is not protected in her state from what the law enforcement authorities could do there. But the doctor who prescribes it, because some of these states have these vigilante laws in place, and you can have mm -hmm. bounty hunters, you know, run down our doctors. I mean, I'm sorry, these are New York doctors. They're keeping their Hippocratic oath and providing services that up yeah. until one year ago were protected by the United States Constitution. So, so this is how we want to make sure that we didn't have a deterrent. We're literally putting up a shield. We call it a shield law. And as I said Friday... Statue of Liberty is in our harbor. We will be a safe haven for these women who come here, but also we are holding up a shield. The Statue of Liberty has a shield in her hand now to stop individuals who would try to prosecute or extradite our own doctors. Lauren, you have a new piece in the Chicago Tribune about the aftermath of Dobbs, and it draws on a poll that your nonprofit commission. And can you talk a bit about the findings of that poll and what you were looking into? Yeah, and look, it's an incredible, there's a, been an avalanche of polls running up to the Dobbs anniversary. But part of what we found, which I think was so important, is this huge divide now between Republican women and Republican men on the issue of abortion. And on a bunch of levels, you're seeing, you know, we saw it in the NBC poll that we talked about on Friday, but we also saw it in our polls that women are really united across the political front in wanting government to stay out of their health care when it comes especially to the abortion pill, which is so germane to what they, we've just passed in New York, but also in terms of their access to health care, reproductive health care writ large. It is still a divisive issue, but is becoming much more of a gender divisive issue than a politically divisive issue. Women across the spectrum mostly agree on this. So, Governor, let's let's get you on that. Obviously, this is so much a health care issue, but it is a political one. Mm -hmm. um, and we are turning towards another election year. As you talk to to Democrats in your state and, and others, how much do you think abortion is going to loom large on the ballot a year from now? What's important is to recognize that New Yorkers know that their rights are protected in our state as long as I'm governor. 
And there, have been a, there was a candidate last year who was vehemently opposed to women's rights. And so people need to know elections have consequences, even in the state of New York, a deep blue state where anything can happen. So we should never let our guard down. Women need to continue to show up at the polls and speak not just for themselves, but also for women all across this country. That's what New York is positioned to do be able to cherish the rights we have, let people know they're protected in every way we can imagine, but also we're the place for other women across America. I mean, so, I Governor think Hochul, is... first of all, uh, go, uh, hold on one second, Elise. I'm so sorry. Um, my bad. But, Governor Hochul, I'm just curious. Um, I, I, first of all, love what you're trying to do to help women across the country who are in these horrendous situations because they can't get the health care that they need. Um, but this measure in New York would prohibit state law enforcement from cooperating with any out-of-state litigation against doctors who use telehealth services to prescribe medication, abortion, or provide other reproductive health care. So if a woman is on a telehealth with a doctor, he's, he or she is protected. But how does she get that medication in the state that she's in? Because if she goes to a pharmacy, aren't they not going to give it to her? We can also have it sent to different clinics and providers, but also you know, we're going we're gonna to test this. You know, this has not been mm -hmm. done before. It's not been enforced. And I'm prepared to stand on the constitutional rights of the people in this country. And we'll, if someone sues us, we'll fight back because we cannot right. be subjugated to these individuals who are just weaponizing every way they can to take away women's basic rights. And we're sick and tired of Got this. It. We're sick and tired of being victimized by people who are at war with women in this country, whether it's the Supreme Court of the United States, whether it's Republicans in Congress or Republican governors. My God, why don't they pay attention to the fact that women will be voting, more women vote than men. That is a good thing. And there will be consequences yes. when we take back the House next year and start letting people see that elections have consequences. Yeah, Governor, they do. The and... And these need these governors who uh, are imposing six week bans, 15 week bans, they need to be voted out because at this point, women are going to die or become sterilized because they can't get the health care you need. Lauren, you've been jumping in. Sorry to cut you off. Lauren no, Leader, you're Anika. next. No, I talked to one of the doctors on Friday who is involved in uh, crafting this bill. And one of the things she shared to the question, Mika, you asked about the mailing of the pills is that women today in the states where it's illegal or it's difficult to access, they're ordering pills from places like Mexico. And the benefit of a bill like the New York oh. bill is hopefully these doctors can mail them directly to patients. They'll get them within a couple days. Governor, are you hopeful that other states may follow suit? Because this feels like the kind of innovation that um, we need. I mean, I think a lot of lawmakers are really struggling with how to respond to this crisis in ways that are legal, that are accessible. Are you hopeful this will happen elsewhere? New York is always as happy to lead. I mean, the women's rights movement started here. Abortion was legal in New York three years before Roe v. Wade. So we're used to being leaders. And yes, we have provided the template. We have the legislation, we have the language. We're happy to share that with any other governor who actually respects the rights of the women that they are representing in their own states. And so we're happy to do it and we're happy to be the test case because we have no choice. Again, this is a war we are in and we have to use all the arsenal, all the, mil all the assets we have to be able to win this on behalf of our women. So, uh, Governor, this bill takes effect immediately, or yes, when it does. does it go into effect? No, we have okay, doctors so who you... said, the second I sign it, yeah. uh, they have patients who are desperately waiting for this. So will you do me a favor? I'm so curious as to what different aspects of this will play out as you try and make it happen, trying to get medication to women in other states, what challenges you run into, and then what solutions. I'd love for you to come back, even in a matter of days or weeks, to give us an update on where this stands and, and the impact that it's having. And we certainly will. Okay, Governor Hathi Co uh, Kathy Hochul, thank you very much. And